Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,895. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in beautiful Toronto, Ontario, with a very special guest by the name of Shell Smith. Shell, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I certainly am, Mark. It's great to meet you, and thank you for having me on your show. Absolute delight, and uh, to a a fellow uh, car enthusiast, of course, as all my guests are, and racer, uh, which I used to get to do some of that. We'll have some fun today. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that maybe most people don't know about you, Shell? That's an interesting one. When you put that in there, I said, wow, that's a question I got to think about. I actually don't like being in the spotlight that much. I'm a fairly open, friendly individual, but I'm really happy to stand back and let the other folks on my team, um, you know, enjoy the uh, enjoy the limelight. So love being here. But, you know, at the same time, don't uh, don't force myself out in, in into this area at all. So well, it, it's fun to do this with you. That's a sign of a good leader, I think, uh, right there. Is let other people shine. So most definitely. But we'll have some fun. I'm going to pull some things out of you today, I hope. That's my plan. So let me give you a proper introduction. Shell Smith is the CEO at ShiftGate. You've heard that name here before with the past two guests on the show. It's a modern approach to classic car online auctions that launched on July 21st in 2021. Shiftgate was built for every car collector, enthusiast, and dreamer. Shell's passions for racing began back when he was a kid with his scale electrics. I had one of those. And his racing career (laughs) spanned over 30 years. He's been an instructor, a driver. He's also a very avid sim racer. And I understand he builds some uh, computers for that, which is cool. He's been an entrepreneur and business owner for three decades as a consumer marketer and strategist specializing in attitudinal, say that five times, audience creation for media, owning several patents in media audience creation. I like it. Today, Shell and his two business partners, past guests here, Neil and Amit, are helping people connect to cars by marketing intelligent and hyper-targeting advertising that connects active buyers with motivated sellers. We love it. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Shell, but first a word from our valued sponsors. So uh, give them a listen, give them a little love, and we will be right back. Keep the seatbelts on. We're with ShiftGate. Summer is here, and that means long, hot days. Oh, boy. Covercraft's UVS custom sunscreens are quality-made and are incredibly fast and easy to use. Your UVS sunscreen is custom-tailored for your vehicle, and their accordion design ensures easy storage. Not only do they protect your dash and interior for maximum protection, while parking in the sun, sunscreens keep your vehicle's interior significantly cooler. They are durable. They're dependable for years of use. I have one for all my vehicles. Every time I park my car, my Covercraft sunscreen goes up in the window. You can choose from a variety of colors, including the original, Premier Series, and Carhartt designs. Your sunscreen is manufactured with the quality and attention to detail that's been the standard for Covercraft since 1965. And they make a really great gift as well. Get your summer deal today. Use the code YEAH21, Y-E-A-H-21, at Covercraft.com, and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% 10% off. Use the code yeah 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day and he asked me about American Collectors Insurance. He said, while I listen to you on Cars Yeah, you're always talking about agreed value collector car insurance. Well, I insure all my cars on my regular auto insurance policy and I've done it for years. Why use a different company for my collector cars? I get a multi-car discount. Isn't that good enough? I suggested he call his carrier and ask how much he would get if his collector car was totaled or stolen. He called back and said, boy, that was a scary conversation. Their value of my car wasn't even close to what it's really worth. Thank you for the education, Mark. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you receive with an agreed value policy. American Collectors Insurance has been protecting enthusiasts since 1976. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 
9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green's at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. They're the ones that insure my car. That's American Collectors Insurance. All right, Shell, we're back. So we're going to dive a little deeper into the corner, something you know how to do as a racer. I'd love for you to give us a little bit of your background here and then dive into ShiftGate, why you got involved with your two uh, business partners there and what this business means to you. So grab the wheel. Sure. I mean, I think at the end of it, it was actually finally listening to the advice I had been giving to everybody else, including my daughters, which was find something you absolutely love and then find a way to make a living at it. And that really honestly is how this company was started. It brings two things that I enjoy enormously. One is cars. Um, I've been addicted to them since I was seven years old. And on my birthday, my dad gave me a choice between a train set and something brand new. I guess it was the first sim racing that ever existed, which was Scalectrics in England. It was a slot car set. And I'm dating myself now, Mark, because the <laughs> you and me Formula both. One cars had engines in the front. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think one was a Van Wall and one was a Cooper. And the other part of it that I love, which is, and I've enjoyed so much in my career, you know, was strategic marketing and just really looking at categories like you know, the collector car online auction business and really figuring out what the opportunity was, how to build a business, where do you want to take it and developing, you know, the strategic framework to build a successful business. I mean, those are two passions. And to have a chance to do that with ShiftGate has has been really brilliant for me. So, well, you found the secret sauce to life. That's what Car Show is all about, what I like to call inspiring automotive enthusiasts. And you definitely have figured it out. So when we think about ShiftGate with your two cohorts uh, in the business having been on the show before, I'd love to hear your conceptual idea of what the brand is and how does it stand out differently from other online sites where you can go and buy cars and interact with people. Uh, what are you guys doing or in your perspective of, the, of ShiftGate that makes you guys a little bit different, a little bit unique and a lot more fun? Yeah, I think there's two things. I mean, one from the business perspective, and I mean, I can't tell you what goes inside, um, you know, the, the the organizational structure of our competitors. But I think what what does make us different is we bring a really strong corporate discipline to what we're doing to succeed. So you look at my background as a strategic marketer with clients like Procter and Gamble you know, that I've spent 20 years working for, you know, Neil's background in terms of, of launching a, a major hearing aid company that, you know, went from four people to, to, you know, almost 900 and then got sold. So we've put together an incredible team of really talented individuals and in everything from media, PR, strategic marketing, operations, web design, and we've built out a really well thought out business plan. So we know where we want to be in six months, in a year, two years and five years. And, you know, we invested close to a year developing that roadmap, because I think if you know very clearly where you want to go, then you get there. If you have no sense of where it is, you you you, you end up going round in circles. That's the mind of a racer, I say, because, uh, <laughs> you know, a racer is never looking right in front of them or very much at the gauges, really. They're looking way down the road, uh, and that way they end up where they want to be versus uh, just paying attention to where you're at at the moment. Because I always say it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you're down rowing in the boat all the time, you don't go up into the, uh, the gull's nest up there at the top of the mast and look out on the horizon. You might just row in a circle or right into a bunch of rocks. Absolutely right. Yeah, that that does make you guys different, I, I believe, because a lot of the the brands out there, and even the super successful ones, you mentioned bring a trailer. Randy was an early guest of mine here on Cars Yeah, and uh, even back then, uh, in fact, on my show, he announced they were going to become an auction site, and that was like, oh, what? Wait, that's kind of a neat idea. Okay, and now. It's a really neat idea, especially when you think about what's happened with COVID and these big auction houses for so while couldn't even have an auction. Uh, How else are we going to interact? But we interact online all the time now. Everybody's gotten used to this whole thing. So I think timing wise, you're in a nice place, too. So tell us from a, a thought process on ShiftGate, in your mind, what makes you a little bit different? Yeah. And that was the second part I was going to get to. And I'm glad you asked that. I think, you know, we've explained what makes us different from a a corporate standpoint. But the real thing that we're trying to do is we watch what has happened in the category and it's exploded in the last five years. You know, COVID has accelerated people's comfort with making purchases online for big 
ticket items in a touchless way. I mean, it's accelerated at 10 years in six months. But if you look at the category, it's an amazing place and we want to be able to serve that community. Big thing that we wanted to do, and I think something that we really thought about was to was to help expand it. It's really not so much about going head to head with each other because I still think this is such a, a young category with so much opportunity to grow that we can grow it together. But a big thing for us was literally the idea of, we sort of call it no borders, no boundaries, no barriers. So, you know, I raced for a whole bunch of years before I even knew, you know, that there was an opportunity like bring a trailer, whereas my partner Mitt knew it from day one. And, you know, the idea was to say, you know, we have this amazing pool of enthusiasts that are engaging in the category really actively right now. And we want to be part of that audience. But can we expand it? So can we bring women in? Can we, you know, recognize that? How do we help young folks get into this category? We hear constantly that millennials are less interested in cars. I don't believe that's entirely true. Is it really a function of they're not interested or we haven't exposed them to this amazing hobby? I mean, we're in the business of fun. I mean, I spent years selling. My daughters like to tease me that I spent a lot of time helping clients sop up waste, working on Tide Pods and Pampers and Bounty and Charmin. It's the truth. And I say it paid for your college education. But what I think so wonderful about the category that you and I are in, in cars, is that this is about fun. This isn't about transport. This is about, you know, our love of any kind of enthusiast vehicle. And it's about the stories that they tell. It's remembering the first time you drove a car, you know, a road trip that was special in the car that you, you did it in. And if we can knock down some of the barriers and sort of say, you know, hey, there's no gender barrier. It's not just for guys. It's not just for people with a lot of money. And kind of make our platform inclusionary. So, and I think you see it even in our launch and we did it on purpose. There's some inexpensive cars in there on purpose because the folks buying that now, um, if they love it and they have a great time and they enjoy the whole experience of it, they're going to come back and they're going to do it again. And as they become hopefully more successful in their lives, the stables will get bigger and the cars will get more expensive. So I think for us, that's really what we'd love to add to what has already started is can we can we expand it outwards while it continues to, to grow as a category? Can we make that circle of inclusion? a lot wider. I think it's great. And I've, I've seen this in other categories. Let's take car clubs. For instance, old school car clubs. I've been a member of the BMW club, Porsche club, and other clubs for a long, long time. And I'll say the old guys, I'll include myself, but some of the old guys are not very inclusive. They, they, they don't want to change. They don't want to adapt. They don't want to grow. And even when it comes to sometimes I'm shocked, like, how come we don't have more women at these events? Well, women aren't interested in cars. What? I mean, I've had over 300 plus women as guests on my show that are professionals in the automotive industry. And there's a lot more that are going to be on my show coming up. That's not true. And also, you don't see a lot of young people at these car events sometimes. And you go, why not? Well, because we've not welcomed them. Um, they feel a little bit like, well, I don't have a fancy Porsche. I just have kind of another kind of car. Well, that's okay. Uh, I didn't have one the first time I went to a, a Porsche event. I wanted one, uh, but I eventually learned more and people brought me in. So that in, uh, that inclusion of people, especially young people and women, uh, even uh, different socioeconomic classes of people that haven't been exposed to this that can come in and feel like they're a part of it, uh, will just help build a bigger audience later. Because you're right, us old guys, you know, we're going to age out here at some point and uh, we want young people to come in to be the caretakers of these fine cars. You know, I'd assume you probably had a driving inspiration in your life, somebody who's been a mentor, someone who's been influential. Who is that person for you? You know, there's more than one, but there's really only one that counts. When I was very small, my uh, my dad was transferred to the UK. He worked for a Chicago-based multinational, and I had no aunts and uncles in England. And so, mom and dad's close friends and 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 colleagues became my surrogate aunts. And my uncle John Wolf, who was a very close family friend and worked with my dad, and then was just sort of part of the family, was also a, a fairly serious national sports car racer. Mm. And in the mid '60s. He began to dabble in Le Mans first couple of years in a, a less than successful run with a, um, a Chevron Repco. And I just, I hero worshipped him. I mean, he was just, he mm -hmm. was such an amazing guy. My first ever race on that scale electrics that we were talking about, Mark, I learned two things. One, I was absolutely addicted to racing cars. <laughs> and two, that a race car driver won't even let a seven-year-old kid win. So <laughs> no, they won't. he beat me in my first race and I looked at him and I went, Uncle John. And he went, Shell, you got to learn something. You have to try harder. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but John, um, John in 69, we were moving back to, uh, to Canada. 
he had come over to have lunch with us a couple of weeks before we were heading out. He was off to Le Mans the next weekend. He had was one of the first private owners of the Porsche 917. Oh, and oh uh, this was a really, I, I don't ever remember John being so excited. He was telling us that we were moving back to Montreal at the time and he was going to be doing the Can-Am in North America after Le Mans. So we were going to see him at the, at the saint Javit race. And then tragically, a few days later, John was killed. Oh, no. Uh, he was that terrible accident in 69 oh, um, yeah. when the 917 was still not an aerodynamically successful car. It went on to be the probably the best sports car racer ever built. But uh, it, it had a really um, profound effect on me. I mean, I know it shattered my mom and dad. But for me, I adored this guy. And maybe it was because I was 14. But that was it. That was when my absolute obsession with cars and everything to do with motorsports and motorsport history. And I sort of remember sitting down and going, I have to find a way to do this. I have to be involved. I'm not a very good race car driver. I'll be honest with you. I'm 90% heart and 10% talent. But there was room for guys like me. And, you know, one of my passions was, could I drive some kind of Porsche at the three great sports car tracks? So, you know, Le Mans never happened, but I got to practice twice at the 24 Hours of Daytona. I got invited to do it and got to go out with some of my heroes like Mario Andretti. So scared because I was being watched so closely by the officials because I had no business being there. And to race at Sebring, doing the support race for the 12 hours. And yeah, I mean, John, I think the reason Shiftgate came about, and as I'm talking to you, I'm actually looking at an Italian model of the car. Yeah, that was, he was it. I mean, it was, uh, you know, all these years later, I think Shiftgate and my passion for cars and, you know, the folks that love it and my love of just everybody is involved. Yeah, came from John. He was the influence. I wish he could see this right now. So Yeah, I'm so sorry you lost him. I Yeah, those were, oh, those racing days are crazy. You know, I did an interview, was coming up here with Sam Posey, the great Sam Posey, who was a racer, of course, drove all sorts of different cars and be, became a commentator on sports networks. You know, we've all heard his voice throughout the years and he's getting way up there, but I was able to do an interview with him and his son. They just did a book together. And you mentioned Le Mans in 917. Uh, at the end of my talk, he said, Mark, you have very different questions than most people have for me, which is great. I love it. But he said, everyone always asks me, what's the fastest I ever drove in a car? And I said, okay, I'll ask you, Sam, what's the fastest? He said, said, 200 and, uh, it was 248, I believe it was 248 miles an hour. And I went, wow, what was that in? And he said, a Ferrari. And he said, and I got passed by Pedro Rodriguez in a Porsche 917. 917. He was doing, he was doing 252. So, uh, yep. yeah, uh, incredible. Going down the Molson Strait at Le Mans without the chicanes, right? <laughs> well, yeah. And I had Vic Elford, quick Vic on the show, who's driven every 917 ever. And him, I remember him talking about driving down the Molson Strait. And there was a little cafe to the left. And he said, every time you go by, it, when you're going that fast, and you know this, you can kind of focus on one thing for a quick second and it freezes. You know, uh, it's kind of like when you're in a train and you you just follow your head. He said there was a lady in a red dress drinking coffee in the morning. And I went by it, you know, well over 250 miles an hour and went by again. She was still there. I went by a fourth time. She was gone. And I've always wondered, who was that lady in the red dress? You know, That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing such a heartwarming story. We're going to take a short break, come back. I want to talk about a challenge because challenges are an important part of the show and how you overcame them. So keep that thought. But uh, our thoughts with John Wolfe and the, the wondrous things that he brought to your family and to all of us as a racer. Great story. I'll be right back. What began as a charitable car show has grown into the world's greatest collector car auctions, raising over $133 million for charitable organizations to date. For nearly 50 years, automotive enthusiasts from all over the world have enjoyed the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auctions, and I'm a huge fan. Regarded as the barometer of the collector car industry, their auctions are world-class lifestyle events, where thousands of the world's most sought-after unique and valuable automobiles cross the block in front of a global audience, in person, on TV, or streamed online. Barrett-Jackson produces the world's greatest collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, and new for 2021, Houston, Texas. The excitement of Barrett-Jackson auctions is contagious, and a unique experience is not to be missed. And be sure to visit BarrettJackson.com today. Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions. Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, 
collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Shell, let's talk about that challenge, obstacles, failure. It doesn't really matter what it was, although I want you to walk us through that bumpy time. It's more about how you moved past it in a positive way. What was the lesson learned? So uh, take us on that ride, would you? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, we talked earlier on about, you know, my background in strategic marketing and, and media and audience creation and a partner and very good friend of mine had started a company. We were doing all the standard stuff you're doing, getting it built, getting it going, had investors coming in. And then just we got flipped by um, stuff you can't control. First, Craig discovered he had cancer and we oh. got him through that and uh, he survived it. And literally four months later, I walked in and went, you're not going to believe it. And, you know, I went, it's my turn. What? And uh, we both beat, well, I, he eventually um, succumbed to it. I beat it truly. The actuaries have rated me standard for insurance, and I believe them better than the doctors. So that was <laughs> yeah. 25 years ago. But wow. I think what you learn from it is not so much, you know, the disease itself, but it brings it brings any human being down on both knees. It really does. I mean, and it yeah. frightens you. And it's, but it's what you do with it. And I think for mm. me, you know, was a... A really interesting decision, and this is another you know crazy true story that I'm I'm kind of surprised I'm telling you this stuff. I was a pretty avid road cyclist, and I was riding my bike, and I was a fit guy, and was really shocked that I'd gotten this news. And I was due to have surgery, and I looked down at the area where the cancer was, and I went, you know, enjoy the ride, man, because in two weeks you're out of here. And I really did say that. That's not uh, it's not an exaggeration. And then it's the fight back. And I think what I learned out of it was even when you get you know, knock down and you're down on both knees, just never, ever, ever give up and fight back. And I think that, you know, face what frightens you and walk right through it because amazing things come out of the other side. And I think I, you know, I bring that, that I I wish there were better ways to learn that lesson, but I think I brought that into everything I do. And I think it's what we bring into Shiftgate right now, which is, you know, as part of my role to lead, and, and to give people that confidence is that, you know, no matter what gets thrown at us, we know we have the right strategy and we stay the course and we don't flinch and we keep on fighting to deliver what we want to do. And so I, it's a, a tough one, but I got a huge amount of positive out of that one. And I view it more as a fantastic life experience than, 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 a, than a nightmare. I never want to go through it again, but I took something super positive out of it. Wow. Well, man, what a story. My hat's off to you. You know, this is very interesting to me because I just uh, had a guest on the show and his name is John Hotchkiss, a racer, uh, raced many, many years. He and his father ran some incredible cars, 962 Porsches and Group C prototype uh, spice cars and so forth. And he ended up having cancer in his foot and losing his right foot, his throttle foot. And shared that story and then how he had to come back, was told he'd never be able to drive again or surf or anything, but he's doing all of it. And he had very much the same outlook as you. He said, you know what? I'm going to beat this thing. I'm going to make it work for me. It'll be a part of my life. Yeah, but not a fun part, like you said. I don't want to ever do that again, but I will come back. And he did just that. So it's very interesting that here I've got, he was on a couple weeks ago. I believe 1889 was his guest number, and you're uh, 1895, so let's pretty close. Go. Pretty darn close. Yeah. That way I've had two here, uh, but I really, my hat's off to you for approaching it the way you did and thinking about it the way you do, because again, uh, cancer has stricken so many people. My mother's a cancer survivor, and having an attitude to beat this is such a huge part of it, right? Absolutely. I mean, and it's, and you know, heroes of mine are guys like that. You look at Alex Sonardi, always loved him as a race car driver, oh, but gosh. when I truly wow. was blown away by him as a human being was after his accident. 
And that's when I went, okay, you're a remarkable human being. And every day that I feel sorry for myself about something, all I would say in my head is, what would Alex do? Ah, nice. And I never met the guy, but I just, it, it was so authentic, everything I'd read about him. And uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's really how you deal with adversity and what it teaches you. Wow. Uh, kudos to you, my friend. That's awesome. Wow. Whew. Well, I want to talk about a bucket list item. Uh, you've done some amazing things in your life. You sounds like you've lived your dream. You're still living your dream and creating this business with two pals of yours. Is there another big thing on your bucket list that you'd like to see happen for yourself? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm getting to do two of my favorites right now. You know, one is is the business building and two, doing it around collector cars and enthusiast cars and mm-hmm. motorsports and motorcycles. One of the big ones that I really, really, and it means a ton to me, and I, we're already doing it in Shiftgate, which is how do I put back into the community? I mean, this is sort of getting to that stage where there are so many places that I would like to take, you know, what I'm doing and how do I... I um, I'm very much, and I mean, we were even thinking about, you know, you look at things like the Children's Wish Foundation, what can we do to do those kinds of things and go out and support? So, yeah, I think the whole, and that's something I see not only happening in Shiftgate, but something that I want to do in my personal life. You'll see in, as we grow Shiftgate, and and it's a decision we really made that we have to live it. Um, it had to be authentically us. As we start to, to ramp up, there will be more and more aspects of what we're doing that have very little to do with the transaction of helping people buy and sell cars. It's what can we do to make this community more fun for more people? Where can we help? Where can we add um, and build back into it? I think that's what it started originally as a bunch of hobbyists who love this. Right. And I think we want to expand that in a, in a, in a more focused way. That's awesome. You know, I, I think about Concord events as we recorded this, we just came off of, of course, car week and yep. you know, last, uh, the, this year, uh, take the Pebble Beach Concord, all these concours raise money for great causes to help people. They raised $1.75 million after coming off of a year where they didn't even have a show and they raised over a million dollars. Uh, that goes to local charities and kids groups and schools in the area, Monterey Peninsula. All these events always do great things for, for others. And uh, I'll tell you the one thing I always say, that I've learned after interviewing 895 plus people now is uh, we are happiest as human beings when we're giving back to others. And once you figure that out in life, it opens up all sorts of wonderful opportunities. Even if you don't have a lot to give, let's say not not a lot of money, uh, there's so many other ways to do it. And I'm happy to hear that's part of your guys' plan. So uh, you figured out another secret sauce to life in addition (laughs) to wrapping your passion. Let's talk about cars, a very special car in your history. Uh, What was that ride? And tell us something about it. Oh, Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's so many. And this one I, I'm struggling with, Mark, because, you know, I have four that I want to tell you about. <laughs> and I'll try to decide right now which one I want, Yeah, which tough. one I want. I mean, I, I think that, you know, it's actually got two wheels. Oh, a bike. Yeah, it was a, a BMW motorcycle. And what I loved about it is I, I had a period in the last 10 years and particularly, about, about, you know, sort of about five years ago and back for a few years where I decided I'd seen, you know, America from all the big cities and the boardrooms. I, I mean, yes, I'm Canadian, but my whole life has been in the United States. All my business and, and everything I've done has always been down there. So I hope you guys think of me at least as an honorary American because I course. love the country. All the Canadians are our buddies, our friends. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see the country in a way I'd never seen it. So I, I got on a motorcycle and I did it over five years, same bike, and I wandered all over America. And I had two I had two missions. One was to find the next set of, of twisties that I could get an adrenaline rush out of. But the <laughs> biggest part was to was to meet real people. Just to, you know, where you don't expect it, whether you're wandering through the Appalachia or you're out, you know, in Montana or in now, sadly, what's burning in Northern California. And just a chance to talk to people when you go by yourself. And if you're driving a bike that's a little different from everybody else and you're open, it's a chance to connect. And I think what I learned out of that whole experience and I think the bike it's why I love that particular, you know, vehicle so much is I I just the insight I got into human beings. Um, mm-hmm. you know, no matter how different we are, shocked by the kindness that I met in different places. So yeah, it was it was life altering. If you invite me back, I have eleven other vehicles <laughs> I'd like to talk about. Now so. was this BMW, <laughs> was this the GS? Yeah, it was because oh, I could both, bike. you know, yeah, you can, you can go anywhere with it. You can go anywhere with it. Do the distance is comfortable. And then when you get to the twisties, it'll carve. So yeah, it's uh, they're oh, they're awesome bikes. You know, I I rode bikes for a while. I don't ride anymore, but uh, I was into Italian 
uh, bikes, uh, Ducati Monster and an MV oh, Gusta F4. That was crazy for me to be riding that thing, but it was so cool. I have uh, all the broken bones to go with it. So. Oh, ouch. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, um, it's it's a fun sport. And I'll tell you, I just saw a great story this morning about a young, I think it was a young boy, might be a young girl, sorry, low, I think it was a little boy, who uh, lived on a road uh, kind of where all the bikers would come into Sturgis every year and he set up a lemonade stand and he was giving away free lemonade uh and hoping they would give a donation to a children's hospital group raised thirty two thousand plus dollars from bikers coming into sturgis and you know the thing i learned too about bikers and you know this being a rider i mean they all wave to each other with a hand signal if you stop somewhere and there's other bikers they're always no matter what kind of bikes they could be harleys you could be on an mv or instant friends it's the same in the car community right it's just it's a one wonderful group of people. That's what I love about, I mean, and it is the car community. It's not people who drive everyday cars, but it's the car community, the bike community, the racing community. And you've seen it in all three worlds. It's, it's incredible. I mean, you have a problem and there's 20 people stop to see if they can help. Yeah. Yeah. Just set your helmet on the road there and somebody will stop and help you for sure. If you need it. I've been there, done that. I'm going to crawl into your skull a little bit here, Shell. (laughs) You're a psychologist. Okay. Uh, If you were manifest as a vehicle, what would Shell Smith be? But more importantly, why? This is your toughest question, Mark. I, I know. So I know. It, it, just, it trips people it up sometimes. <laughs> you know what? Because I'm going to do this. This one I'm going to do completely impromptu. BMW okay. 2002. Oh, okay. Interesting. And, All right. And, you know, it's the first sports sedan that I ever fell in love with. I couldn't afford. I was in college, but just loved it. And I think the reason I like it for me is that it's not flashy. It's strong. It's functional. But it does so many things mm-hmm. well. So it's not the fastest. It's not the best handling. It's not the best grocery getter. It's not the best looking. But when you get to know it, you go, wow, this car does so many things yeah. so well. It's been well thought out. And you have to take the time to get to know it. And if that probably would be the real me. That's authentic. I like you it. Know? Yeah. You answered that I'd really slip well. It, I'd, I'd slip in Porsche 908 as my dream car, but that's more because I just want to do two laps in it. <laughs> ah, no kidding. You know, and I we had a really nice, I'll tell you listeners, a great pre-show chat before we talked. I think we spoke for almost a half hour. And uh, one of the things you said was, you know, you and I have something in common. We're Porsche guys, but we've all we've talked about our BMWs here today. Um, <laughs> we got to say something about Porsche because my listeners know I'm a, a lover of Porsches. Let me ask the question a different way. If you were manifest as a Porsche which model would you be? Racing or non-racing? I'm going to throw that slightly back at you. Oh, well, let's go race car. Why not? Oh, a race car. Yeah. Oh, the 904. 904, yeah. The 904. Just because it was a beautiful, beautiful car. And it was the beginning of that amazing journey that they were on. Yeah. And I would love to own one, but Oh, boy, it, oh boy, it oh boy. become a that's little unobtainium. <laughs> that's uh, slightly unobtainable. Is a, lot, a lot of Porsches have. You know, I've always wanted a 356 and they've just become nuts. Uh, and it's like, shoot, what I should have, should have, would have, could have. Uh, Were you surprised me. by the 904 as an answer? Not really because of the racing prowess in your background with racing and what 904 meant to Porsche and racing and how that launched so many other great cars. I mean, you get in the 908s, the 910s, 917. I mean, it's just kind of the progression and growth. Uh, so no, I think that works. Yeah. Okay. Nicely done. I love it. We talked about how you like to give back and how ShiftGate's going to be doing that. So I'm going to jump ahead to a great book you'd like to share with our listeners. Uh, what would that be? Is there something you've read recently, perhaps, that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, there's one I'm actually reading right now. I haven't finished it. And it's it's an interesting president. It's the biography of Harry Truman. And he fascinates me because as just a very ordinary guy, a haberdasher, a guy really didn't ever see himself as being a president and was just the time in history had all these enormous responsibilities thrust at him to close out World War II and all the different things that he faced in the period that followed. But the thing I think I loved about him the most is everybody wrote him off. Nobody believed he could pull it off. And yet what he accomplished was absolutely remarkable. So he's a very interesting guy. And, uh, you know, it's just what I'm reading right now. And it gets back to what we talked about a little earlier on, which is that idea of you just never quit. You just never give up. You just continue to believe and stay the course. And I think that's the thing I took away from him more than anything else was just that steel underneath the surface. 
There's been uh, several books written about Truman. Is, is it the one by David McCullough? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's the yeah. one. Okay. I, yeah, it's more uh, more of a newer book. So yeah, there's also a great one. Uh, I think it was The Wit and Wisdom of Harry Truman. Uh, it was quotations, anecdotes, observations that somebody had handed off to me. And I thought, this is kind of interesting. It gives you a little insight into the man. And, you know, we all have these images of presidents and what we were taught maybe as kids or what history kind of keeps repeating. But when you dive deeper into who these people really were, uh, you really start to learn some interesting things about them as human beings and individuals and uh, their traits. So uh, I'll definitely put that on the reading list here uh, at Cars. Yeah, you listeners know there's a great place called Guest Recommended Books where there's over 2,000 books listed and I made it really easy for you to get your hands on those books. We're going to go on the ultimate drive here, Shell. I'm going to allow you to pick any car in the world, any passenger to be with, living or deceased, and you can be driving anywhere you'd like to be. Maybe even you want your guest to be driving. Could be somebody who's kind of fast. Who knows? What does that ultimate drive look like for you? Two. I'm going to throw two in really quickly. Okay. Brian Redman. Okay. In any kind of Porsche around Le Mans, telling mm-hmm. me the story of his history because he was there in 69 and, and 70. And to hear that amazing storyteller with that wonderful Yorkshire accent. <laughs> yeah. I great. would love to do that. I, in fact, I, it, it's that sort of on a bucket list of, of hopes. And Brian, if you're out there, I've been following <laughs> you since I was a little kid and I would love it to happen. The other one's going to make you laugh. Two Vespas, okay. London, Jamie Oliver, and I <laughs> want to go shopping with them. I happen to love cooking, but one of the other parts of Shiftgate is what Jamie did with cooking. He turned it around. He 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 took all of the snobbiness out of it mm-hmm. and said, cooking is for everybody. It's for hanging out with your mates. It's fun. Everybody should be able to do it. And he just – he really turned it around for so many guys and said – why aren't you doing this? This is That's a really cool. good time. Yeah, so, I like him. Yeah, if he'd, do, if he'd do that, I mean, I'll even pick up the grocery order if he'll cook. <laughs> I think that's great. You know, Brian uh, was a guest on my show a couple years back, and the day that we recorded his show was his birthday, and he sang the British birthday song, which I had never heard. It's Did hilarious. You yeah, you can go back and find him on the Cars yeah website. I just interviewed him again. He's going to be coming back uh, in about a month. I'm doing a special week-long promotion of the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. Um, he's going to be uh, one of their key people there along with uh, Corky Coker of the Coker Tire Dynasty. And um, yeah, he is so much fun to talk to. He's just got a great a great outlook. I've had the pleasure of talking to him in person a few times at historic events, but yeah, getting in a car with him, going around Le Mans, uh, I'll pass the, that wish along to him. Who knows? Maybe that's something we can make Well, happen. tell him at a minimum he has a, he has a huge fan up in, uh, will. in Toronto. Okay, I'll definitely do it. He's a very approachable guy, uh, great fun guy, absolutely. Uh, Brian Redman. So watch for his show coming up, listeners, coming up here to promote Chattanooga. Uh, great car event. They're having historic races, concour rallies, uh, a drive-in, car drive-in thing. It's going to be really, really fun. You've been really fun today, my friend, Shell. This has been such a delight to get to know you better. I'm so happy that I had kind of the three amigos here with Shiftgate on the show. Uh, for all of you, I want to do a shout out to Ryan McKenzie at ANC in Toronto for introducing me to Shell, Neil, and Amit. Uh, three great guys, part of Shiftgate. Uh, would you leave us with a little parting piece of wisdom, advice, uh, success quote before we let you go? Sure. And I, and I want to thank you, Mark. I've enjoyed this so much You're as well, welcome. too. So Good fun. I hope I hope we get to do this again. Yes. Yeah, it's um, something I learned from a, an entrepreneur restaurant owner. And I really did teach my kids this. They will, they will tell you this is the truth. And they asked him the secret to his success. And I think you and I talked about this in the pre-show. Mm-hmm. Find something you love to do yeah. and find a way to make a living at it. If you can do that one thing, it doesn't guarantee you a perfect life. But boy, does it set you off in the right direction. Uh, Yeah, you know, it's really what this whole show I started is all about, what I call inspiring automotive enthusiasts is uh, people that have figured that out. And uh, here we have another one here on Cars, yeah? Shell Smith, who's figured it out. So yeah, go out there, listeners. And I've had a lot of listeners on this show who've emailed me and said, thank you. I've changed careers. I'm now doing something I really love, thanks to your guests. So uh, hopefully we're changing some lives together as well. What's the best way for people to learn more about ShiftGate? Oh, just come to shiftgate.com, folks. That's all you have to do. And you will find us very accessible. So it won't be an email response from a computer. If you've got a question, um, we'll get back to you personally, and we're happy to talk to you live. So 
It's a fun site. Uh, pour yourself a tall drink. You're going to be there a while uh, <laughs> looking at cars, having f- some fun. Uh, if you're looking for a car, you want to sell a car, shiftgate.com. That's the place to go. Shell, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your life with us. What a wonderful talk this has been. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. <laughs> Cars yeah is proud to support our veterans, which is why I've teamed up with our nonprofit partner, Tech Force Foundation, through its Veterans at Work Military Transition Campaign. The tech shortage is very real, and our country needs skilled, qualified techs to keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. When so many vets build their skills in maintaining and servicing vehicles when deployed, Tech Force helps transition those skills to jobs as professional technicians when they come home. Learn more about Tech Force Foundation and its Veterans at Work Military Transition Fund at techforce.org today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!